Linux is known for being a fantastic option to bring inexpensive or old hardware back to life, but is it worth buying a premium machine that ships with Linux? Thanks to Slimbook for letting me borrow their 16-inch executive laptop, I kind of have a decent idea. Just how I have a really good idea about how awesome our sponsor is, FlexiSpot. What I'm using here is the FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing Desk E7. And on this desk I have everything mounted to. I have a whole arm set up with my camera, microphone, lights, I have my monitor mounted to it, and just a whole bunch of stuff. These desks are incredibly sturdy. And of course it is a standing desk, so over here we have a little touchpad with up down button, a memory button, we have one and two for some presets in addition to the standing and the sitting presets. The E7 is on par with some of the competitors at a lower price point. And at least the E7 I have actually has adjustable width, so you could kind of place the legs wherever works best for you as long as the desk is properly supported. And if you get the lower model E5, it can support up to 220 pounds when it comes to the lifting feature. And if you get the E7, it supports up to 355 pounds. And if you are interested in purchasing this desk, make sure you go ahead and check out the link down below because they're currently running a FlexiSpot Tech Day sales event in which you can save a fair bit of change. So again, link down below and thank you FlexiSpot for making this video possible. So for this video, we're gonna be kind of doing this in reverse. I'm gonna start by talking about the software. The device they sent me here had their very own custom spin of Ubuntu called Slimbook OS, which is basically a modified version of Ubuntu with some OEM software pre-included and a fair bit of extensions. They have a welcome screen to get you going with their battery optimization tools, face recognition, and gesture controls. They also ship with U-Launcher, which this is the first time I've seen anything shipped with U-Launcher, so that's pretty cool. My initial draft of this review was kind of negative and it was primarily due to Ubuntu, but after a couple weeks of using it, I switched it over to Fedora, particularly Norbara, and after that, I've had a pretty decent time. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the actual hardware we have here. The processor, it is a 12th gen Intel, specifically the i7-12700H, and it does feature a dedicated NVIDIA RTX 3050 Ti. For the hard drive, the smallest option on their website is a 500 gigabyte, but actually going into it, there's a spot for a second NVMe SSD if you do want to upgrade it. And I, I couldn't help myself, so I flipped this guy over and opened it up so I could actually see what the inside looks like. It was fairly easy, but do be careful here because the plastic doesn't feel like the strongest. And the inside was a little more hollow than I would have figured, but I guess that does help with the weight a little bit as it comes in at 1.5 kilograms, which is light compared to my Savirus M16, which comes at two kilograms. This machine does ship with a single stick of 16 gigabyte RAM, and I would recommend you do that because the uh, pricing of an upgrade is kind of comical. So now let's go ahead and focus on the outside of this guy and check out some of the IO. Each side features one 3.2 gigabyte USB as well as a USB type C. In addition, the left side here has a SD card reader as well as a headphone jack. And the right side over here has a full size HDMI as well as your power in. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, it is pretty nice, but it's definitely not the best in the world. As to me, the keys feel a little squishy when you go ahead and type on it and they seem to be a little more spaced out than most of the keyboards I've ever used, so it definitely took me a little bit to get used to. Generally, when typing, I either use the keyboard of the M1 MacBook Air, or I use this Ergo keyboard from a ProtoArc, and these actually have some pretty, pretty nice uh, scissor switches. So that's just what I'm used to as a reference point. This keyboard is backlit though, which is a nice touch, and any computer that you spend more than like $800 on, in my opinion, should have a backlit keyboard. One thing I do really like is just the comical size of this trackpad. It's literally from here to here. <laughs> it puts any other trackpad that I've ever used or currently own absolutely to shame. The only real negative about having a trackpad this big is I find myself accidentally kind of right-clicking with my palm, but that's something I kind of got over pretty quick. The main highlight of this computer definitely is this display right here. It is a 13 inch, 16 by 10 display. And just one thing that's lacking in this market of Linux laptops in general is really good high resolution displays and they absolutely nailed it. Specifically, it's a WQXGA 90 Hertz matte finish anti-glare 
LTPS display with a resolution of 2560 by 1600. And at first I thought I wouldn't really like this anti-glare display, just overall consuming media on it was incredibly immersive, even with the uh, black bars you kind of get with a 16 by 10 display. This alone is kind of the main reason I'd consider this laptop over some of the other competitors in the Linux laptop market. For example, System76 has a laptop of roughly the same specifications with an even larger screen, but that screen is at 1080p. And yes, I do understand that some people would prefer that. There are trade-offs again, as with 1080p displays, you will probably get better battery life and you won't have to worry about scaling but nothing's better than a perfectly scaled 2K display like this one. It's, and when it comes to my personal experience, it was pretty good, especially after I switched over the operating system. I will note if we go to the ordering page for the Executive 16, you could actually pick your distro down here and this or this is what I'd recommend. I was lucky enough to have this device for the last two weeks of my summer quarter at school, so I was able to use this with all my final projects and major assignments. In addition to that, I actually did some media production work that a uh, Jing OS video that I uploaded recently all of the editing, recording, and everything was done on this laptop. Which, by the way, that's a fantastic video. Of course you should go check it out, but I do have a little bias. So with that, I had to carry it around quite a bit in between various classes, to and from school, and it was an absolute breeze. The thing is lightweight, especially for how big it is. And just overall, this thing is built pretty well. I mean, it's got the sharp corners, it's clean, it's sleek, it's modern. Overall, it's a good looking device. As far as the battery is concerned, when it comes to light workloads, having a couple Firefox tabs open, maybe some audio or a YouTube video playing in the background, I got anywhere from five to seven hours of battery life, and that's in either balanced or power saving mode as the integrated Intel graphics were being used instead of those NVIDIA graphics. When I did more intensive tasks that required the NVIDIA GPU, such as OBS recording, maybe a video render, some gaming, then battery life dropped somewhere in between the one to two hour range. So overall, this thing was a great experience, but the thing to note is if supporting a Linux company isn't a major priority in your purchasing decision, you do need to understand you are paying a premium for this. I found an MSI laptop with identical specifications on Newegg for about $100 cheaper that comes with a Windows 11 Pro license. Something Slimbook does actually offer you, if we go ahead and scroll down here, right here we have the Windows licenses, which if you wanted this, it would be an extra 100 bucks for a Windows Home there. So this is one of the best options for not only a company that ships Linux, but for a company that supports the Linux community as a whole. That is absolutely true. Now, is this the best laptop you could get for the price? Probably not. But the main reason you'd really want to buy this thing is for the sleek appearances and the catered Linux experience. So that, that's my review. I do hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you check the link down below to save some money on a fantastic standing desk. Uh, and with that, I'll also include links to the Slimbook as well as links to some of the other products that they offered. If you're not interested in this, they have desktops, gaming laptops, a uh, all-in-one PC. So go ahead and feel free to check those out. And goodbye.